Hey guys, this is Allie with iMore, and today we are going to look at a complete take apart video for the iPhone 4S. Depending on which mod you're performing, you may have to uh, only take it apart to a certain point um, that will be indicated in the mod. Uh, once you're done, we'll also have a complete reassembly video, uh, same thing. But we're going to start always before doing anything, you're going to want to turn your device off. So you're going to want to slide the power off. Uh, while that's powering off, we're going to look at what tools you need. This is for a complete take apart. Uh, you're going to need a security screwdriver, five point pentalobular screwdriver uh, for the two dot connector screws in the bottom. All iPhone 4S's will have them. A uh, SIM removal tool. Uh, some of your phones may come with this, some of them don't. Not quite sure Apple's reasoning behind that. Um, or a paper clip works fine too if you bend it to remove the SIM. Uh, you're going to need a pry tool or spudger. Any kind will work. I prefer the ones that have pointed ends on one side and a spudger tool on the other. Uh, Phillips screwdriver for the flathead or cross point screws. Um, a standard double zero screwdriver. Uh, you don't necessarily need a spatula or a flat tool, but I prefer using this. It's easier to pry the screen off, especially if it's cracked than uh, something like this because the edge is thinner. So, And again, in all our mods, we link to places that you can buy these tools. Okay, so first we're going to start by taking our security screwdriver and we're going to remove the two screws in the dot connector. Okay, And one important thing to remember is when you're taking these apart, always organize your screws. Uh, it's a really big pain if you forget where they came from. Guess and check is not really fun. So just keep them organized. Some of them inside the phone are the same. The two dot connector screws are the same size. But just keep them in little groupings so you know where they go. To remove the back, all you're going to do is slide up. And then the back's going to pop right off. So we can set the back aside. Now we've got a look at the inside of the phone. First thing you're going to want to remove is the battery. So you can see right here is you have two screws right here that hold the battery in. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our double zero Phillips screwdriver to remove the two battery screws. And the two screws, the top and the bottom, are a little bit different in size, so keep those in order. Uh, you're also going to notice that there is a little grounding clip right here. Uh, I always pull it out first, or you can just hold your hand over it so it doesn't fly up when you unlatch the battery. Um, I just edge it out and grab it. So, And that's that grounding clip. So don't lose that. You want it for reassembly. It grounds your antenna. So next thing we're going to do is use our spudger tool. And on the 4S, the easiest place to pry up on the battery is right here at the bottom. And you're just going to pry up gently so that clip pops off. Now to get the battery out, there is a pull tab here that you can pull. Um, I don't like doing this. It's pretty flimsy. It tears. It can also bend the battery. So the easiest way I've found is to work your way along the side here. Because there's really no cables you can damage. Just don't go too far up here where your volume buttons are because you can tear that cable. Uh, and then you can get a hand on the battery and gently lift it. You'll hear that adhesive tear. That's normal. Gently lift it out of the foam. So you can see this is all sticky underneath here. So set the battery aside. If you're, if you're performing a battery replacement, that's all you're going to need to do. You're going to pop the battery back in place. Uh, if you're doing another type of repair, we're going to move on. Now we are going to remove this top shield up here. So you can see there are four screws holding this in. One, two, three, four. So we're going to use our double zero Phillips screwdriver. And again, these screws are different sizes, so keep them in order. And we're going to remove the four screws that hold this shield in. And uh, if my camera person can pan up here, you can see that I kind of keep them in little groupings. So I know which screws go where and where I'm putting them in for reassembly. So. And 
Okay, so now that we have the four screws that hold this shield in place, I'm going to use my pry tool, and there's little teeth right here that hold this in, but if you just pop it up from the bottom right here, So all I'm doing is lifting this up to where I can get a little bit of a grip on it. And sometimes it does get stuck on this adhesive for this cable right here, so I'll just run my pry tool right there just to make sure that adhesive doesn't pull up. And then this shield will just slide right up like so. So we can set that aside, our screws for that. Um, if you're performing a camera replacement, all you're going to have to do is camera sits right here. Pop up this cable, camera pops right out of the phone. Put your new one in, and then you can move on to the reassembly video and watch from that point forward. Uh, if you're doing something else that requires you to go further into the phone, uh, we're going to look at that right now. So we're going to pop up all these cables here. There's a total of one, and then there's a cable underneath here. So you're going to need to pop that one up too. Two, three four, five, these are your LCD and digitizer cables. There's another one under here that we're going to get to. You just use your double zero screwdriver to take this screw out. Just another shield. And the easiest way to pull this out is I just use my pry tool and place my finger over it. It pops right up. And this is what that shield looks like. So don't lose that one. And this, uh, that's a grounding shield for your antenna. And then there's one more right there for a total of, I think, six. One, two, three, four, five, yes, six. Okay, if you're performing something in the bottom half of this phone, you might not have to pull up these cables. It depends on what you're doing. If you need to remove the logic board, uh, you need to remove all of these cables. So now we have a shield that sits over our dot connector cable. So we're going to remove the two screws. And again, sort your screws. Remember where they came from. And this shield is just to protect the dock connector cable. So, once we have those out, we can lift up this shield. Sometimes it sticks on there a little. Not very often, though. And there's your shield for your dock connector. Set that aside. And now we can use our pry tool to pry that up as well. Now, this cable is one you're going to want to be careful with because there's adhesive that lays underneath here to hold it in place. So when you peel it back, you want to peel back slowly, and I did this purposely on a phone that's never been taken apart before. So you can kind of see, if you're taking apart a phone that's been taken apart before, you might not have the same sticky adhesive. The battery might be a little easier to come out, so that's why I did this on a phone that's never been taken apart before. Uh, now what we're going to move to is the antenna right here. We are going to use our pry tool. It's a little round connector, and just pry up like that. This one actually came up very easily. You can see that it loops around here, so you'll have to unloop it. And then just maybe push it off to the side a little bit so you can get to the rest of the screws. Now we're going to move back to our double zero Phillips screwdriver, and we have three screws that are on the logic board that are double zeros, and then two that are going to require a flathead. So first what we're going to do, um, one of the screws lies up here underneath this uh, little piece of tape. Uh, I use a pry tool. You can just pull this piece of tape up. either go around the side. I normally pull it up from up here, push it back enough to get a grip on it, and then pull it off. Um, I do put this back on for reassembly, so I'll stick it on the side of a table or somewhere that, you know, I can access it and remember to put it on for reassembly. Um, so the first screw right here, we're just going to use our screwdriver. And there is a little shield underneath here, a little clip. So once we have that out, you can see there's a little gold clip right here. Um, there it is. And you're going to want that for reassembly. So we'll set that aside with that screw. And again, these are different sizes, so remember where you're pulling them from. Our next screw is right here in the middle of the logic board. Again, double zero. And we're going to remove that and set it aside. And our last double zero is right here in this corner above the vibrator assembly. And we're going to pull that one out. 
Now we're going to move on to our uh, small flathead screwdriver. We have two shields, or not two shields, two screws right here. We have one on the top and one on the bottom by where the battery sat. So you're going to use your double zero, and these are different sizes because they have screws that sit on top of them. So you're going to need to make sure you remember which one goes where. And you're going to pull that first one out, and then we're going to pull out the one by the battery. So now that we have all those up, um, you can of course remove your SIM first. I don't. This is just the point that I remember to pull it out at. It doesn't remember what. It doesn't matter what time you pull it off at. So I'm going to use my SIM removal tool, and I'm going to remove the SIM slot because this will hold down the logic board. That's the last thing that's holding the logic board in place. Uh, to pull the logic board up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here at the bottom with my finger up here and I'm going to gently lift straight up. You're going to want to make sure your cables are out of the way. Uh, you might need to tilt it towards the side to clear it through these cables. And you'll be able to lift it right out of the device. Um, I do want to make note that there is a little grounding rubber piece right here. Don't lose that. It comes right off. So it just sits right up here in this groove, so make sure for reassembly you have that or you could have signal issues. So make sure that's sitting there. Most of the time it'll stay on, but sometimes if it hits these uh, cables when you're pulling the logic board out, it'll fall off. So just look for that when you're pulling it apart or putting it back together. Uh, so next what we're going to do is we are going to remove the loudspeaker assembly. So if you're looking at this piece, um, this is what you're going to be looking for. So, and again, these two screws on both sides of this are actually the same size, so it does not matter. You can group these two together. Um, under the screw to the left, you're going to have a little black um, plastic retainer piece, and I'll show you right here. You just pull this gently out of the device, and it sits right here in this corner. It's just a little black triangular piece, uh, so we'll set that with our screws. Uh, this is the loudspeaker assembly. If you're replacing the loudspeaker or the antenna, this is the piece you're after. Um, if you're replacing either one, unless your assembly comes complete, complete with the loudspeaker and the antenna, you are going to want to remove the antenna off of this. And there's just two screws. I'm not going to remove it, but there's two screws right here that you'll pull out uh, to remove the antenna from the loudspeaker. And this right here is adhesive. So you'll just start here and pry this up and replace either a new antenna or put the antenna on the new loudspeaker assembly and then start reassembly. So if you're doing that repair, that's where you'll start. All right, so now what we have left is the vibrator assembly right here. Uh, the way I use, I pull this up is you can either use your spudger tool or you can use a flat spatula-like tool. I prefer this. I'm gonna turn the phone around so I can get an angle on it from here. And what I'm gonna do Sorry, that's going to make it hard for you to see. Um, I just use this tool and I gently insert it underneath. It's only held with adhesive and rock it back and forth until it comes up from the device. So as you can see, it comes up pretty easy. Um, sometimes the adhesive will stick to the back of the vibrator assembly. Sometimes it'll stick to the device. Either way, it's fine. Um, in this case, it it stayed on the assembly, which is fine, so I'm just going to push it back down so then when I put the vibrator assembly back on here, it'll stick nicely. Okay, so now at this point, unless you're replacing the vibrator assembly, we're going to assume you're replacing the screen or the home button. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to remove the front panel from the phone. There are four screws in each corner. One, two, three, four. We need to remove those four screws in order to get at the screen. So uh, up here, this screw is covered with tape. You can either remove that tape. Um, I typically just unscrew it with the tape as a shortcut, and I'll show you. There's screw number one. still have the tape on it, and then I'll just reinsert it with that on. It's kind of just a shortcut. It's quicker. Um, so all I'm going to do is remove these four corner screws.
This one's a little hard to get at because you do have components in the way. Just make sure you don't damage those. I typically just angle the screwdriver so I don't get at those. And pull that screw out. The four corner screws are all the same size. You can group them together. Uh, now we have a couple more screws that are holding the screen in. Uh, these you can see run along the side. One, two, three and one, two, three. So you got six total, they have washers on them. You don't need to completely remove these. I actually advise against that. They're a pain to put back in. So what I do is maybe use, uh, unscrew them by about two and a half turns just to loosen them enough to slide. There's little clips that hold the display in. I just loosen them enough for those clips to slide out. So all I'm gonna do is loosen those about two and a half turns. Okay, and now our display is ready to be removed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this is where I like the spatula tool. It's a little thinner than this. It's easier to get in the edges. I start up here in the top left hand corner and I insert my spatula tool and gently pry away from the display so I don't nick the paint and you'll hear that adhesive breaking. from the display and this is one that's not broken um, if you have a broken one glass may come off that's fine it happens um, this adhesive is pretty strong if it's never been taken off before so just be careful um, if you're replacing a home button you want to be really careful at this point that you don't break the display so all I do is work my pry tool along here to pull the front assembly off and there's the top that's popped off. Now I want to move along the bottom, along the home button. Okay. And at this point, you can see the cables right here for the LCD and digitizer are going to slide through this opening. So, and there's your front display. Um, if you're replacing your home button cable, we'll have a supplemental video to show you how to peel this off. Uh, that's coming soon, so we'll have that up. Uh, 4S users don't really have the issues with the home button that 4 users did. So, um, And you'll notice that the difference from the 4 is that your home button stays on the front assembly. It's held on with a gasket. So if you're doing a screen replacement, I'm not going to do this, but um, all you do to get the home button off is take your spatula or pry tool and carefully remove this gasket and all and you're going to place it on the new assembly if a home button's not already on there. The only other thing you want to worry about is depending on where you bought your uh, your new front assembly from if you're doing a screen replacement look at your speaker mesh and the camera hold and if your new assembly does not contain those you will need to remove them from the old assembly. The way you do this just use your plastic tool pop it off um, I use a pry tool like this and just pop the speaker mesh out and then use a little bit of adhesive and place it on the new one uh, before obviously inserting it into the device. So at this point, this is a complete take apart. Um, if you need to do anything with these small components, we'll have separate supplemental videos, for, supplemental videos for these coming up. If we don't already have them up, check our YouTube channel, iMore Video. Um, other than that, this is a complete take apart down to the screen of an iPhone 4S. Thank you.